morning, everybody. Welcome back to a Subi Shaves video where we're going to be discussing the VC2, what this razor can do for you, and how to make this razor shave with just about everything available. This is a razor that I depend on, and I'm after this video, I'm sure you guys will too. I won't blame you if every shave of the day post you do going into the future is with this little razor after our few tricks and tips. We're going to be using Oceana. This is from B&M, and this is the sixth time in a row that I've used this soap. I love this soap, can't get enough of it. It's a, uh, yeah, it's an aquadigio, but with a little bit more ocean to it. It's it's an aquatic with the background being aquadigio. It's clean, there's no mustiness to it, there's no dirt smell, there's not a ton of salt. It smells like ocean air slightly, you know what I mean? Like that. It has the essence. It's really nice. We're going to pair that with Kaizen as a splash because I think Kaizen works really nicely on top of Oceana. It's the fifth time I've used Kaizen on top and I, I, I still love it. Um, it's from A&E. And then we're also going to be using the A&E 26, I think 26 mil synthetic. Um, this is an awesome, awesome brush, tons of, uh, tons of backbone and I just like it. It works really well for me on, on camera. It's one of those ones I can rely on and you know, we're going to be going the Cremo. This is the Birch Silverwater and Birch. Um, just extra slickness, right? We're slickness snobs. We're in this game. We want to get smooth everywhere. We're going to be using a little bit of Cremo for a little extra help. What we're talking about this. This is a razor that you and I and everybody else in the world, the first time you've looked at it, you probably thought, too much. That's that's terrifying. I don't want to deal with that. This razor after today, we're going to make it seem so easy. You're like, well, everybody else should be using this razor. And they're going for cheap. You can find them for practically nothing on eBay, right? The three C's, guys. They're, they're, they're super cost saving. I mean, I think they can get them for like three or four bucks. I saw one guy sell his for like a dollar with um, five ninety nine in shipping. These are razors that are they're plentiful. They're around, and if you search, you can find a really good condition one. Um, for I, the most I've ever paid is ten dollars uh, for one of these, and they are fantastic razors. Um, what I wanted to talk today about, right? This isn't a Subi Shaves video unless we're talking about hacks. Unless we're talking about how to make this razor work better for you guys with everything that you have in your back closet. So my first video we did a uh, compare, we did a discussion on the entire line, a VC line, you know, the, the Valley Auto Strop line. I'm not gonna do that here. Um, I did wanna mention, since I didn't in my first video, that you previously could run a strop through and strop your blades. And that's what these roller bars are. I didn't mention the roller bars. Thing is, is today it's not being done. It's not really super useful. I have one over there. It's just they're they're amazing for the collector for the person that's running carbon steel blades you can make them last a little longer if you're willing to do that extra step it was really popular during times where there wasn't a whole lot of shaving equipment going around right nobody wanted to spend that, that extra couple of dollars to get more blades for the week so stropping was a necessity anymore today's modern era we have de blades for by the millions most of us could shave for a whole life with what's in our closet so i don't i don't want to cover it a ton on the channel but i just wanted you guys to know that's what these, these uh, roller bars are back here the vc2 if you go back and watch my video you know that it opens exposing uh a similar bar a semi loading uh plate as the first one but instead of sliding your blade in guys right you open the little door you see this? You just open that little door and we're gonna, sorry, new camera, new camera setup. There we go. I'm trying to figure out where the focus is. So you guys can see it has this loading plate and then you put your blade on there and close it. And back in the day, Valet punched through the front end of this, uh, this, uh, this top cap. <laughs> Word eluded me. They punched, actually pressure punched uh, from the top cap in and it created these little ridges. You guys see these little ridges up here? These little ridges is what held your blade in place while you were closing this. And they were specifically punched for a valet blade. Now, this razor came to me with those little punches removed. Somebody had dremeled them flush. 
And I ended up buying two other ones, two, two other VC2s. And then keep in mind, this is not a VC2, right? This is a VB2. Hmm? This has that ball end cap. This is this is one of my sweetest little vintage shavers I've ever owned. I this was a trade, and I'm very, very, very thankful for this trade. Pete, super shout out to Pete who traded me for this. Um love the VB2. In, er, yeah, VB2. Sorry. A side note. Um it came to me this way and I bought two other VC2s for like 10 bucks. Um, they were in really good condition and I, they both came with punches and the punches were in different places on both models. Some of the punches, the one punch had punches like up here and over here. One had like, I think four, that was like four punches. And I just took a Dremel and I Dremeled them right off. And you're like, Subi, why would you do that? Well, let me tell you, if it has the punches guys, you cannot load very easily any other blades, right? The valet blade is the only blade or a FH, an FHS feather blade. Only things that work. But you know me and I know you guys and I know you guys are like, I'm not gonna settle for just one blade. So we're gonna dremel those off. That's what I did in my my four, my, my, my previous life, right? Previous time off camera. I went in and dremel these little guys off. And what you right, what you end up with is a flush loading plate. It's nice and smooth. And that lets you do things the way you want to. So for me, remember that gem blade that we made in our previous video? We took the spine off. Well, that gem blade will work like this. You just put your gem blade in, take your little uh, little loading door. I don't know what we kind of call this thing. Close it. There you guys go. Huh? That is the gem blade that we made together, loaded, and it will shave, no problems, just like this. But you guys aren't happy with just a gem blade. You guys are like, ah, that's cool. I mean, it's a little, it is a little more fiddly because you don't have the little nubs holding it. So maybe that's not for me. Maybe I'm just gonna move right along. And I, I understand, but let me try to convince you guys. What if you could do the same thing with an injector blade? right? Injector into a VC2. Again, you have to make sure that when you're doing this, um, everything's kind of flush and lined up. I've done this so many times at this point that it's really, uh, it's not a huge deal for me. I do find that if you load your, uh, inje your injector, sorry, I'll stand back so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, if you, I find if you load your injector, guys, you want to load it a little bit with a little less gap because what you're going to find is the injector blade, or at least for me at the angle that this shaves, is very efficient. doesn't need a lot of gap to be very effective. I don't know why that's the case. Hmm? Hmm? That's an injector blade. I'm going to flip it around, not cut my fingers off. There you guys go. You guys see this? That is your injector blade being held nice and taut. And it's gonna flip right down and, and that's shapeable. Mine, guys, holds this injector blade tight. Somebody reached out to me and said that they've been taping their injector blades after removing the nubs a few years back. It's like, yeah, I have to tape them. I don't know if that's safe to use. I think that spring door may be fault failing because mine is tight. All four of the ones I've done have been tight with an injector blade. It will not go anywhere. Um, <laughs> Sidestep. When before shaving, again, we use our handy dandy, mostest trustiest shims, right? We use plastic shims, guys. We check our, our blades before we put them to our skin to make sure they're not wiggling around. Okay, just wanted to say that one more time. I would hate to have somebody cut their face off because they didn't check the blades. Okay, again, sorry, morning's turning on. Um, but what if we could use perma sharps? And that's today's shave, guys. Perma sharps, DE blades, cheap, easy to come by. Best part about uh, DE blades, though, is everybody knows, is there's lots of coatings and lots of adjustability to them. So, if you find the VC2 to be too aggressive, different DE blade could really change that. Um, if you find it to be too inefficient, right, going to a feather DE blade, maybe that's perfect and a little bit cheaper than a feather FHS blade. Um, this is cool. And unfortunately, because of how thin these are, 
I'll show you guys. Because how thin these are, even in the paper, this barely like closes like tight enough where it's actually gonna do anything. You have to, most guys, what they've been doing for years, I've talked to a bunch of guys that have done this mod. They did this mod when their grandfathers gave them the razor 20 years ago. They've been taping these base plates. They put tape and then they put their razor blade on there. And that holds them taut. The problem is it shims, effectively shims the razor. So it will always either be a little more aggressive or a little more mild than it was stock. Be nice if we can figure out a way to use this without a shim. And that, boys and girls, that is the sauce. That's the secret sui sauce today. I'm gonna show you guys something I developed. I don't know if I invented this. I think I may. I've never seen anyone else do this. I've never seen this ever mentioned. It's gonna be revolutionary. It was for me at least. Uh, I'm gonna use it in a bunch of old vintage models that I've had a hard time with. Um, the pen razor, this thing, it, I only one Google post about the specific uh, pen razor. It's in a museum in Connecticut. I know that because I got a notification that there was one in a museum in Connecticut, which I'm going to go visit. Um, but this works for that razor that I did, just couldn't figure it out. And it works for the valet line and it works for the Christie's and it works for the Keen and the Ender Speed or Ender's Dollar Razor. It, it's going to work for a lot of you guys. It's uh, hard to fill blades. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the Subi scissors and we're going to cut the wings off 50% because it's too wide to fit in the valet frame. And at this point, you guys should just be used to cutting wings. I still do it on camera because there may be a couple new guys watching this and they're like, cutting wings? We do it in the paper, guys, because it makes it so that our scissors have something to grab onto. It makes it so we don't have to put our hands on an open blade. Don't cut through this time, though. Don't do that. This time, we're gonna snap them. And we, and we wanna do that slow. We want to have a deliberate process where we are actually bending the metal. That one bent, that one broke a little too fast, but we are, there you go. We are actually deliberately flaring the side wings. And you'll see, I'm going to set these on the side before I get them out of the paper. Again, because fingers are important. These have little, this one's really good, the camera. You see how those ends are curved because we flared them? That's the, that's the trick. That, you guys, if you know that trick, you're done. You, you, you can shave. We're gonna take these. And you see these little teeth? You guys see the teeth right here? Well, these teeth actually intertwine. You guys see this? I am not holding anything together. It's pretty tight because of the way that the, the bend works. Look at the curve. You see how there's almost like a little bit of a, a natural curve to this blade. And I'm just kind of trying to get this so you guys can get all the angles for when you're doing it at home. Look at where the blade sits and look where the teeth are coming out. So these it's in the middle interlocked, but the, the edge wings are out. I don't know how to show you guys any better than that. This is the trick. It's going to reduce the amount of length of your DE blade. Keep in mind, there are still two blades here, so they're still sharp on this other side. And you could actually take that off tomorrow and use that blade to shave. You don't have to waste any blades in this technique. Okay. This right here, because it has additional width, from the curve, just loads straight into your razor. Just like that. And because it's got more width than standard DE blades, you don't need to shim. You don't need to, you know, um, cut any plastic you don't have to put any tape down and i'm gonna go kind of slow because this is the blade i want to use to shave today okay there we go oh yeah nice nice and tight i mean it's it was hard to snap that down you guys see this? 
right up against there. Huh? You guys see how much blade gap I'm using? So then we're going to pull our lever down. And as you guys can see, see how that blade gap's like pretty, I like uh, in between. It's not where the gem blade's going to sit, but it's also not quite where the, the injector sits. It's like an in-between. And I find this in-between setting, again, take your shim, double check it. Go in between those combs, put some pressure up. If it's not moving, it's not, it'll shave, no problems. That's all. That's it, guys. Video over. I know 15 minutes. We got to we gotta start moving or else people are going to get angry at me. Everybody's like, Josh, at 10 minutes, I didn't watch it anymore. Man, in 10 minutes, you haven't even seen the cool trick. I got to work on that. I'm sorry. This is just water. I'm wetting my, wetting my head, wetting my face. Forget I'm not shaving my head on camera with you guys. All right. All right. Subi style, man. Subi style. We're, we're going for it. I'm excited to have a... Uh, little aquatic, little aquatic shave going on. And I have to admit to you guys, I've done this shave four times now. Um, the first time I did it, halfway through my shave, dog freaked out. Dog went bananas. Dog started barking like crazy and I was like, I cannot film. I can't post a film where you like, the dog just goes wild for like five minutes because the mailman came. Next video, I was like, okay, I'm gonna get up really early, no mailman. Got up really early and I was using new software. And the first time I filmed it, I won't lie to you guys, it just, it, it looked dark. So next time I did it, right, that's three. I was like dead set and having perfect video and screwed with the, the like filters. And it, I was orange. I didn't realize it during the filming. I was orange. Orange just comes. I looked like... I look like a Trump. It's the only way to put it. Like I was oompa loompa orange, but my lips, because the saturation was blown out, were bright pink and red. It looked like I was wearing lipstick and I was orange. Like I had straight up gone Jersey Shore, snook style, the snookster. You guys remember that? It snooked all over, but it was like really dark background because of the saturation and contrast. Anyway, I've been playing with this video a couple times and I think I finally have the setting figured out. Um, hopefully my new hardware is going to let this video work. <sighs> Every test video I've done, this looks okay. So let me know in the comments. Let me know and PM if you want to, if this works for you guys, because I would hate to do these videos in bad quality. And I actually want to go back and redo my, um, my video with, uh, the one blade. Cause it was just, I was learning where, where, how I do things now and how I did things then. I have changed so drastically um, as far as filming goes. No, the, the content's still the same. But good content is only good, right, if the quality is good. I don't care what if you're shooting the last dinosaur on Earth. If the content looks sketchy and scratchy, you can't really tell what's going on, right? Sasquatch. You get a picture of Sasquatch, but the quality's not good. Eh, it's not going to really be beneficial to anyone. So I need to go back and redo those videos. I just have so much other content that I want to get through, you know? I guess I'm lucky I'm buried in content and not like uh, having a problem with content. Having a problem with ideas at least. And that's the thing is that uh, my buddy Scott reached out to me yesterday. He's like, Josh, we can do a, you want to do a shave with this and this and this? And I was like, dude, I barely do the shaves I have in my closet right now. All right. This is with the open comb, guys. Keep in mind, perma sharks. And oh yeah, it's definitely a little bit more mild than the VC one, definitely. But I am a frequent VC four shaver. It's my favorite razor, favorite razor out of the line. And this is more aggressive than that razor, for sure. Has a lot more blade feel to it. But not like a bad way. I know right now some of you guys are like, Josh, we need to know. Does it still have the cool steampunk gears? Guys, you know it does. You know you can sell your wife on this being a steampunk kitchen decoration. 
Honey, I'm just buying it for uh for the for the steampunk month. You said you wanted more decorations, right? Shave gear. It can be your decorations. You you blame me. Also, oh, Subi told me. Subi said it works at his house. That's how he decorates his kitchen. Can you imagine? My wife would murder me. She comes home and I've like got all my shave gear all over the countertops. That'd be great. That would be a great way to start start a fight, that's for sure. That's it, guys. One sheet down, huh? Huh? Look at that line. Nice crisp line. Using the VC2 or the DE blade. Or VB2, actually. And I'm going to use those inter interchangeably, and I'm sorry. Mine's a VB2, but... For a lot of you guys, they're going to be the VC2s, and they shave the exact same. You want to know how I know? Because I bought two VC2s. I'm telling you, they shave the same as the VB. The VB just looks pretty, and it feels really firm in your hand and nice and heavy. But you guys are going to get the same shave regardless. And it works so good. Looks so nice. This for me is, uh, like I said, it's a step down from the VC4. As far as shape quality, because I like a closed comb. I am a fan of a runner bar of a closed comb such situation, and this has the open comb. It's just personal. But, I mean, this is still a great little razor. And again, I know it's been said a hundred million times, but pressure really matters with the VC2 because of that open comb. I find that the open comb, if you press down really hard, you can end up um, getting skin that goes in between. And I'm a body shaver, so like shaving a chest, like you can have skin that goes in between the comb and get stuck against the blade. And I had that happen on my elbow once where I was shaving somehow and I got like a piece of this, of my arm went into the open comb and it was really, I can tell you, Gave me a pretty good nasty cut. Just pushing too hard. So no no pressure, right? That was my fault. Don't use pressure. And you get a great, great shave. Yeah. Really smooth, really comfortable shave. Very easy shave. I think that's the thing I love about the VC series is that they're very easy to use. Now you do have to you do have to dremel off those little nubs. But you know what? Tell, v, tell Valet to call, uh, you know, call uh, their HR. Tell them to get their directors on the line and get their executives on the line. But they can't. You know why? Because they went out of business so long ago. So do what you want with it. It's your razor, right? And these are 3 to $5. Do, do what you want. And the thing is, is yes, it become a little bit more finicky. finicky a little more fiddly. But... Everybody I've talked to that kept those, right? It actually still shaves with the valet. And it has those blade tabs, still tells me, like, oh, it's still fiddly, dude. Like, the blade will pop off those little tabs. And not, it's, it's, still, it's still really difficult to shave with. So I say, you know, just nub them off, sand them off, and go ahead and shave with whatever blade you have laying around. Um, like I said, the injector was how I shaved with it a long time. And then I discovered this, this trick. And the cool thing is, is, say you're shaving, right? And you decide, oh, well, that was a cool shave. I would rather have two blades connected to one back piece, right? That works. I did that. Two blades. And it makes it nice and thick. But it gives you the back end. And I was doing it in a couple other vintage razors. You know that's going to be happening on the channel. Great shaves. So... That's all she wrote, guys. That's all she wrote. Check this out. And my soap, because it's been sitting. Look how dense that got. It got really dense today. Unfortunately, it definitely went over. But you see all that stubble in there? It's not taking down little, like, it takes out 
hog, like the thick stuff. And I don't know, I shaved yesterday. Dude, that was only with uh, like 12 hours of growth. So yeah, it, it cuts close with those uh, with those permasharps. And it also is really smooth. You just have to remember to keep that, that, that head angle flush. That's it. Just keep the head angle flush. But if you see one of these, when you're out, you know, vintage shopping, maybe this won't be so scary anymore. And if you're like me, you know, maybe you're just a person that is tired of buying, you know, hard to get blades, right? Gem blades, maybe they take a long time to ship to my house and they're they're more expensive, honestly. DE blades are just, they're everywhere. They're, they're inexpensive and you have lots of options with them. And I'm not saying that like one is superior to the other, I'm not at all, right? I'm just saying, why not have both options? And I wanna make those options clear, right? I wanna be able to say, those options are available to everyone. Huh? Let's prove. Salem, boys. Salem. Am I flinching? Am I running? No. And let me tell you, with a gem blade in there, I would be in pain. Nothing. Honestly, it feels kind of good. Makes the skin soft. Okay, so there we go. Your shave is done. No nicks, no dings, no scratches, no cuts, no bleeding. Just a great smooth shave with that double stack trick. And guys, I am so proud of that. That took me 10 hours. 10 hours. This is the Kaizen. 10 hours of work of just like sitting there like, how am I going to reduce blade size? Take out the circle in the middle of a DE blade. I, don't, I didn't want a circle. I wanted it to be solid like an ender blade. I was like, how am I going to do that? With the DE. Shazam! All right, boys. Again, huge shout out to all 47 of you peeps out there watching this. They made it this far. 47 of us. We have 47 of us that are like hanging out, shaving however we want. I just am so thankful for everybody that has been a part of this, that's been willing to kind of tag along and that encourage me to continue to produce content. Because really, honestly, this guy's is for all is only for you, right? I already know how to do all this. It's 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 for me. This is fun because I feel like I'm I'm contributing, and I don't have to contribute on five million little forums. I can just do it here, and hopefully, you guys can pass it around with friends that you know are having problems or having uh, would would benefit. You know what I mean? That's that's what I hope for, and I hope that's why I want to make it public. Too much of our awesome ideas get buried in shave of the day posts and archived that will never be seen again, right? Um, hopefully videos like this on YouTube can give vintage razors some love and some life back. Not only just vintage, but razors that don't get very much use, right? The R50, things that people don't like. Hopefully I can produce the content that you guys can make those razors usable for you. That's my pitch. You know me, it's been another Subi Shaves. Part two, part three is gonna be the VC4 and let me tell you, it's gonna be awesome. Have a great morning, guys. Bye.